Good Monday morning. It's a, actually it's of the 29th year. I don't get these. These are weeks ahead of time, but it's the Feast of St. Luke. Today is October the 18th that we're celebrating. Actually, it's two weeks. It's, uh, I think, what is it? Today is October 9th when I'm actually doing this, okay? It's a Saturday morning, whatever that is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, today is the Feast of St. Luke, the evangelist. I was thinking about it. Today, actually, at Mass this morning, again, we're using Luke's gospel uh, account during this, this period, okay, in the, in the ecclesial year, in the church year. It's interesting because it's the one, it's a short text where a woman comes up to the, our Lord and says, blessed is the womb that bore you and the nurse of the breast that's, that nurtured you. And he says, no, blessed are they who keep the word, hear the word of God and keep it. That's Luke. That's what a vengeance. You see, what St. Luke is a Gentile. Now, for you and me, we're modern people, postmodern, actually, beyond even modernity, okay, if you're technical about it, we're in the postmodern age, okay? We're in a global community, okay? They ain't. They weren't. What he said is revolutionary. What Christ says is revolutionary, and Luke owns it. He knows it. You see, and then... You had concentric circles of belonging, as it were. And it began with your family, your parents, your families, your sibs, your cousins that worked its way out. See? It's tribal with a vengeance. So for Christ to say, nah, it's a matter of belief, not blood, is revolutionary. It's the difference between Christianity and Judaism Judaism is beautiful too. I know if I sound like I'm critical, I am not. I have my one of my biggest disappointments in life is truly I got my DNA tested hoping I was part Jewish. One percent, that's all I am. Yeah, I caught it. I thought I was at least twenty or thirty percent. Actually the Nazis thought we were because uh, in Italy during the war they went after my people, they thought we were Jewish. That is a true story. Okay. Apparently, my spelling of my last name, Vitali, is a Jewish name. I don't know, but I am one percent. I'm disappointed. I hope my DNA was wrong. I have great love for Judaism, for Jews. I have enormous love for them. Great heritage of survival, despite it all. The redemption of survival. I mean it. I admire them. I admire it, admire it totally. I don't know how else to put it. I wish you were Jewish. I said, oh, how strong do you want it? Okay. But here in the story, you see, Christ does not call us to the Jewish story. He calls us to global. It's, we're not a tribal religion. It's not, you can't test it by your DNA. It just doesn't work. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith. And because it's a matter of faith, you have to reaffirm that faith all the time. And even in Luke's time, you see the story? In the letter to the Romans, you see St. Paul. You know, Look, as a disciple of St. Paul, okay? Guys were defecting all over the place. And defection has been a part of the history of the church, and especially from within, disciples, even uh, Judas is a defector, see? The story, of, the story of Christianity is a story of faith, but faith always allows for defection. As any Jew can tell you, whether you want to be a Jew or not, you are a Jew. <laughs> Ask anyone who survived the 20th century whose families weren't horribly uh, slaughtered. I was going to say abused. All right? They could have been a Christian Jew. Makes no difference. Within your blood, you, you were dead. Okay? Extermination by blood. That is not Christianity. That's Judaism. You see? Christianity is based only on faith alone. See? Hence, in a way, it's more fragile. Why? Because it requires constant reaffirmation of our beliefs. When I see the story, it's very tough for me when I think about it a lot. I wish I could look to family and friends of both past, present, you know, childhood friends, all the way to the present, who are still my friends. Okay, I'm not <laughs> dismissing at all. In fact, quite the opposite. And even, I think, within my family, we're still believers, but are we really deeply believers? I don't know. I don't know. And my friends here, my students, you'd be surprised how many kids, 18, 19, have given up the faith. And it's my experience at St. Louis University, which is a Catholic school, so they're coming here because of the Jesuit tradition, okay? How many, how many, 
Oh, man, you've already lost your faith. You just have to sit in my class. Whenever I, my papers, I always, in my philosophy of religion class, I ask them one question, answer it. Does God exist? You, you, you know, you'd be surprised the spread of answers and how for how so many the answer is no. And I would say more among Catholics than non-Catholic Protestant uh, Christians, more. But when you see it affirmed, it reminds me of Luke again, it's fierce. It isn't casual, it's not cultural belief. They chose it. I see that. One of the most powerful kids in my class, a young woman who'd been through it all, lost her faith, but regained it out of the horrors of her life experience, and I mean horrors. So it's not a piety on her part, it's a profound commitment of belief. She's a witness to it, you have to be there to see it. That's the truth. So I'm seeing the two elements, the two extremes in my own life. I've seen the defection from the faith for so many of the kids, the people, my friends who we grew up with, and even those who remain believers, are they committed believers in the sense of really being totally committed to the Christian, to Christianity and Christ? Or is it on the edge? I don't know. I don't know. I saw it in the monastery, how many men left the outfit. Not because they want to get married, some did, of course, but many because they lost their faith. I'm talking 40, 50 years ago. That's the truth. You know, I don't blame anybody. Some of the best term papers I get are papers from my students or papers from, the, papers from those who don't believe. The powerful things. But then you counter that with the kids who do believe. This young girl, Anastasia, and she'll match up with anyone because she's been there. She's tasted that bitterness. She's tasted the atheistic emptiness. And she reaches for God in belief. You have to see it. It's a marvel. I've seen it in more than one kid, but Anastasia stands out for me. I said to Anastasia, she's a great writer too, but I said, Mark, a really smart kid. I said, Anastasia, you're gonna make a difference. You're gonna make a difference. You're gonna impact the lives of people. You're gifted. You're special. That's the truth. See? It's like Luke, you see. Luke impacted the world because he believed. I remember back in the 60s, whatever it's his worth, you know, most of us uh, my age, I'm 80 next week, okay, we grew up, we grew up in the pious 50s. We grew up in a cultural Christianity. By the 60s, that was up for grabs even within the heart, of the heart of the monastery, right within the core of committed believers. You can't get any more committed guys in a monastery. You want to see the defection because they stopped believing. The conventions fell apart. Eh, and they should have fallen apart. They were hollow and empty. When I look back, I want no part of that silly piety of the 50s. I absolutely reject it. I reject it right along. But I remember in the 60s, I had to make a choice. I was stationed in Jamaica at the time. I remember where I was. And that was 19, between 64 and 65. Around that time, the council had a massive effect on all of us. And I said, do I believe in Christ? Not the rosary, not blessed mother. I'm not taking anything away from them. Do I believe in Christ? And I made an act of faith in Christ, just what Luke is saying. Been there, got the t-shirt, wearing it. That's the truth. That's the truth. In Luke, you see those who are in the story of Romans, okay, but he's describing Luke and his fidelity to Christ, right? You know, his fidelity to St. Paul and Christ, you see. You gotta choose. You don't choose to be a Jew. You either are or you're not. But you choose to be a Christian and you choose this as an act of faith. That's the truth. Christianity is far more fragile than Judaism. See, I could check my DNA to see if I were Jewish. I can't check my DNA to see if I'm a Christian. I have to look into my soul and say one word. Do I say one thing? Do I believe or not? And if I believe, how do I act? See? That's the truth. I chose to believe. And my life has been an expression of that since. I've lived it. Imperfectly, but lived it. So have so many others.
But some of the others have also walked away. They said, I do not, non credo, I don't believe. So many, and especially people I've been especially close to. I respect them now. I respect them. I actually blame the church in many ways for preaching a false piety. Anyway, just a thought. I love St. Luke. He's a good writer, too. <laughs> I like good writing. He's a good writer. I understand that story of the defection. He stayed with St. Paul and changed the world.